Look at how the Kenyan markets are doing today, or rather closed. The NST are closed. We're just waiting for that to come up on the monitor and just see how those markets did today. Looking at them, they closed almost no, 0.25% firmer uh, at 40,000 points. And looking on the currency front, it is uh, looking at the shilling 87.5. Five. That's where we're sitting. Now joining us from our studios in Nairobi to give us an update on the Kenyan markets is Kenneth Mejire, who's the fixed income and money markets dealer from Stanlib, Kenya. Kenneth, thank you so much for joining us today. So let's get straight into thank it. You. Uh, Kenyans, we paying more for their fuel. Um, you, when we did speak a little bit earlier, you said that you know it would have an impact on inflation. Do you want to maybe just give us a breakdown on that? Um, basically, I think two shillings is rather marginal, so I think it will have uh, quite an insignificant effect on, on um, the CPI index for August. And I mean, basically, if you look at it, I think the um, it makes fuel mix up, uh, fuel combined with housing, electricity, and um, I think energy, something like gas, actually, make up about 18% of the CPI basket. And out of that component, fuel is, um, I think, about less than 10%. So, of course, there will be a knock-on effect on manufacturing, transport, and so forth. Uh, but two shillings, I think it will be rather insignificant. The most significant um, effect on the inflation figure will be the base base effect we are seeing from uh, last year's uh, last year's numbers around this time, and I mean going forward, I don't think it's much cause for worry. Um, I'm expecting inflation around levels of probably early um, sorry upper upper sixes um, to about seven percent this uh, this month. And um, I don't think it's a cause to worry. Everyone knows it's because of the base effect. And we expect this base effect to start wearing off as we approach the second quarter of this fiscal year. So nothing to worry about uh, you know, with regards to that except for the base effects. Just want to shift uh, gears for a little bit and look at the 91 uh, Treasury bill. I think it's just come out. We've seen it increasing uh, quite rapidly. I think last week it rose uh, to about 189 basis points. Uh, can we still expect the same sort of increase? Actually, I've just seen the numbers. They, they came out ab uh, about two minutes ago. Um, I think when we spoke earlier, I, I told you I was estimating a rise of about probably a slowdown, so a rise of probably about 30 basis points. And funny enough, it's even much, much less than expected. It's gone up by about nine basis points to about 10.49%. Um, so as I'd mentioned, I think what we're seeing is we're hitting the ceiling in terms of uh, the, the, the highest levels we'll see on the T-bills for, for, I think, probably the next um, three to six months. Now, speaking about you know, things to come or hitting the ceiling, what can we expect uh, from next week's uh, auction, the two and ten year uh, bond, bond auction that will be taking place? I mean, how is the market likely to react to this or take this up? Um, I mean, if you'd asked me that uh, a week ago, I would have uh, told you the market will go in very aggressively. Probably we'll see levels of 12.5% and above for the two-year. And for the 10-year, we were expecting to see levels close to 13%. But um, in the last uh, four days, uh, quite a bit has changed. We saw the CBK come into the, oh, into the market and do a reverse repo. This is the first time they've done this in um, almost uh, over two years. So they came in twice on Monday and Tuesday, injected 12, 12 billion on Monday, 6 billion on Tuesday. And we, this had an immediate cooling off effect on uh, the money market rates. We saw the interbank rate drop to about 8.5% yesterday. Um, I still haven't seen today's figure, but I expect it will be around the same levels. This was from a high of about 10.5. That's 150 uh, basis, more than 150 basis point uh, drop, which is quite impressive, especially for interbank, which is usually very gradual. So this, I think, will have an immediate uh, effect on uh, the T-bills. This is usually mostly, I'd say, a one to two week lag before this is trans uh, before what you're seeing on the money market is transmitted through to treasury bills and to the short end of the yield curve. So I think uh, come next week, um, we should see probably the rates will actually remain flat 
or we may see slight downward movement uh, because we're, we're seeing the subscriptions are up and this is because um, the liquidity situation has improved because of the reverse repo and also the government has uh, begun to spend money. Uh, they weren't spending, there were a lot of system issues in our national treasury also with the whole devolution and uh, so on and so forth. So all these have been ironed out and uh, the mean central bank released funds this week, uh, funds for the county governments plus reverse repo. So the, all this liquidity has come into the system and and uh, what we'll see is a cooling, a total cooling off of rates uh, beginning at the short end. And uh, hopefully this will transmit to the medium to long term. So we may also see um, that it, it begin to affect 10-year papers and beyond. So my view on the two-year that's coming up next week, I'd say we may see lower levels. We may see probably levels of around 12%. And um, on the 10-year, I think he may cap it at uh, probably 12 0.5. I don't think he'll go much higher than uh, probably 12.5 to about 12.8 percent. Right. Now, Kenneth, I just want to, uh, just before I let you go, I just want to get your uh, views on the, the shilling. Uh, we've seen, you know, after we had the central bank had began to pump money and it started to weaken, but now it has stabilized. Um, you know, what's your view on that? What can we expect going forward? Of course, there's always the threat of, of, of um, the shilling. I think that's CBK's uh, first priority and um, keeping this as, uh, as stable as possible because um, we don't want a repeat of what we had in 2011, 2012, the volatility we saw. And um, so it's usually quite a thin line, a thin balance between providing liquidity for the market and uh, maintaining, um, uh, maintaining stability in the shilling. So as you mentioned, um, when they came in on Monday and uh, Tuesday to reverse repo, of course this liquidity, I think a lot of um, speculators came in and um, some speculators, I wouldn't say a lot, probably took positions expecting the shilling to weaken further because of the increased liquidity. Because as you know, um, since the beginning of the year, he's only been doing reverse repo um, as a way to control um, and to stabilize the shilling. He's been pulling liquidity out of the market. But now that he injected it back in, I think uh, most of the market felt that the shilling will, the effect on the shilling will be for it to weaken, probably even to highs of about 88 shillings. And yes, we did see it rise to about, I think, 80, 87 75, um, almost touching 87, 80 um, okay. early in the week. But he wasn't in the market yesterday, and we saw an immediate effect uh, where we saw the shilling drop down to about 87 today, 87, 50 today. And also, I think um, we also saw higher tea, higher prices on the tea auction. Of course, these are dollar inflows, uh, which are quite good, and uh, maybe probably equity equity inflows. So this this has supported the shilling, and um, I think I think the shilling su should stay stable. The central bank seems to be comfortable with levels of between 87 to 88 shillings. Uh, so I think we should see it, uh, trade uh, range bound between those levels.